I'd like to provide you a few more tips for writing your introduction section and how to identify scholarly sources to include in the introduction. Let me just remind you what the introduction section accomplishes. The introduction provides some key background information about your topic. It states the objective of your research project. It allows you to situate your topic within a broader area or subfield of sociology. It introduces some of the foundational literature for your topic that relates to your research topic. It cites this literature and it provides a, a general summary of that literature. An introduction section also identifies the gaps, the problems, the unresolved issues that relate to your topic. And finally, the introduction section states the research question or the aims and objectives of the project. There are a few things that the introduction section accomplishes. It highlights the importance of a topic and why we should care about it. It sets up the rest of the paper by introducing the problem to the audience and why we should study it. It gives the readers a sense of the logic and the reasoning behind your project, why you chose to pursue this line of research. Also, it moves from a very general, broad topic overview to the specific, to the narrow and specific research question that you're examining. Now, the introduction section is not a comprehensive literature review. We'll work on that next. The introduction section is more foundation, more foundational. It introduces the problem, why we should care about it, summarizes some of the general literature and identifies the gaps that the project will fill and it states the specific objective. You should try to address a few questions in your introduction section, things that you should try to answer when through your writing of this section. What are you studying? Why is it important to study? What do we know about this topic right now? What's, can you provide a brief and general summary of what we know? And how will your study advance knowledge and understanding of this topic? How will your project build on what is already known? I want to provide you with a paragraph by paragraph guide to getting started on the introduction. You can develop an outline using some reflective free writing and aim to address some of the following questions. Think about organizing your introduction into three paragraphs. The first paragraph should communicate the general aspects of your topic, what you're studying, and why your topic is important. The second paragraph should communicate a brief and general summary of what is known about this topic and relating to prior sociological research and literature. The, final, the third paragraph should indicate how your study will advance on what we already know about this topic, what the gaps in the literature are, and how your project will contribute to this existing literature in terms of filling gaps and answering questions. I'd like to provide you an example of how I wrote an introduction from a recent paper that I wrote about the how addiction is represented in media coverage of the quote unquote media, of the quote unquote opioid epidemic. Now, this introduction included three paragraphs. The first paragraph communicates the general aspects of the topic and why it's important. The second paragraph communicates a brief and general summary about what is known about this topic from the sociological literature. The third paragraph explains what the gaps are in the existing literature and how we will advance on what is already known. So in this first paragraph of this paper on how addiction is represented by people who are responding to media coverage of the opioid epidemic, what we do here is first highlight the large number of deaths that have occurred due to drug overdose. And this is information that's been reported by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Next, we also note that heroin and use of opioids and resulting addictions have increased um, over the past several years. And finally, we make a case for why opioid addiction represents a social problem that's worthy of study. In the second paragraph, what we do here is we note how media coverage of the opioid epidemic has increased. And we also talk about why this is important 
and we introduced the sociological concept of framing. And this is how people, how media is presented and what it's highlighting, how it's placing responsibility. Is it highlighting certain conflicts? And framing provides a, a framework for how a problem is presented to the, the public that is consuming this media information. In the second paragraph, we also summarize existing research about how the media has framed the opioid epidemic and associated drug addictions. Now, in the third paragraph, what we want to do is highlight the gaps in the existing literature and how this study will advance what we know. So in the top of the third paragraph, what we do is point out a gap in research. We note that research has not really examined how addiction is represented in media coverage of the opioid epidemic. We also talk about how the study will advance on what's known by examining how addiction is represented in media coverage. In addition, we talk about kind of an angle into the current study. We talk about how social media platforms provide a way for us to look at how people represent addiction when they're reacting to media coverage. So social media provides a lens through which to look at how addiction is represented in media coverage. Now, you can kind of take this example and try to develop your introduction through the following writing exercise. First, begin developing the first paragraph by communicating the general aspects of your topic and why it's important. Identify research sources on Google Scholar. These include journal articles or academic books that highlight why your topic is important and provide a, a brief description about how each of these sources relates to your topic. Now in the second paragraph, what you wanna do is communicate a brief and general summary of what's known about your topic based on prior sociological research. Maybe there are key sociological concepts that you need to introduce to the reader. What does this research tell us about your topic? Finally, in the third paragraph, describe how your project will advance on what we already know and how the, your project will contribute to the existing literature and sociology. Will it help address unanswered questions? Take some time to look at some of the previous research that's been written about your topic and think about what new information we'll learn by studying the topic that you're proposing to examine in your project. And write down some of your ideas for what gaps your project will help to fill and how the project will help to build on what we know in sociology. I just want to provide a brief note about how to identify scholarly sources. So in your introduction section, I would like you to aim to include about five to 10 citations to scholarly research sources in your introduction. And scholarly research sources include articles that are published in peer-reviewed scientific journals. So in sociology, these include journals like Social Problems, American Journal of Sociology. Scholarly sources also include academic books. And these are usually books that are published by university presses like Harvard University Press or Princeton University Press or Rutgers University Press. Also, scholarly sources can include reports and publications that are published by government agencies and or nonprofit organizations. And I list these sources kind of in their, the order of frequency with which you might want to include them in your project. So try to focus most of your sources on articles that are published in peer-reviewed scientific journals. You might have a few books, you might have a few reports and publications in your citation list, but try to really focus on those publications in peer-reviewed scientific journals. Also, please avoid trying to uh, including the following types of sources in, in your uh, research paper. So you should avoid including um, sources from social, Wikipedia, from news reports, from commercial websites, from social media platforms. Try to avoid including the following sources in your capstone paper because they are, are not as scholarly as the sources that I pre presented to you in the previous slide. 